The 2024 presidential campaign has seen some comings and goings in recent days. Former Vice President Mike Pence is out of the GOP race, while Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips has jumped into the Democratic primary. Phillips is officially challenging President Biden for the party's nomination, and he told CBS News he entered the race because he's concerned about polling numbers and a potential second Trump presidency. Let's turn to UCLA professor of political science and Central American studies, Matt Barreto. Matt is also a co-founder of BSP Research and a senior advisor to the White House-endorsed nonprofit group Building Back Better. He also conducts polling for the DNC and the White House and has been doing so for uh, several years for Democrats. So he knows a thing or two about Democratic voters. Matt, it's good to speak with you um, from the other coast and, and thrilled to be able to do it in this setting. Our colleague Robert Costa spoke with Congressman Phillips about the impact of his campaign. I want to play you a bit of their conversation. Do you As believe that your candidacy could soften the ground for others to get in? I hope it does. I hope it does. Sincerely hope it does. Who would you like to see get in? I would like to see anybody of good character, a principal, someone who has executive experience and legislative experience. And yes, I encourage others, governors, members of the Senate, members of the House, people whose names we may not even know, because this is America and we need you. Matt, does your polling suggest that the Democratic primary electorate needs more options? No, that's not what we're seeing right now. And in fact, I think the description that Mr. Phillips gave is exactly the candidate and nominee that we have, someone of outstanding character who has legislative experience, executive experience. That's President Biden. And I think there have been questions of uh, Mr. Biden's age and Mr. Trump's age, but these are the nominees that we have. And Americans are telling us that they are satisfied and confident in the leadership Mr. Biden has had. And these newcomers, like Mr. Phillips, we don't think are going to have much impact at all on the nominating process. And in the polling you're doing, and again, you're doing it for the DNC or Biden-aligned organizations, has there been a decline? Uh, well, Go ahead. I say we, we have been uh, doing uh, polling, I would say, for organizations on the left generally, not specifically for the presidential campaign. Uh, that's just sort of just now getting up and running. But we have seen general satisfaction with the policy outcomes that this White House has been producing. Yes, Americans are asking questions about costs, but I would caution people to interpret uh, questions or frustration about costs with frustrations about Mr. Biden. They have been extremely frustrated at this Congress for not taking actions uh, on getting bills passed, on even just getting basic things done. And so um, President Biden has been fighting every day for the American public on lowering costs, on lowering health care costs, on making sure uh, wages are going up. And right now, we're seeing that Americans are, are slowly starting to see that happen. And that is going to bode well, I think, for President Biden, not just in a, a silly primary contest here, but for the general election. We're quite confident in those numbers. Has there been a decline at all in any of the polling you've done among young voters or any other core parts of the Democratic Party's constituency? Nothing that's out of the ordinary, Ed. You know, this is always the type of question you get about a year out uh, before an election. We saw the same thing in 2011 when people were, you know, really pulling their hair out over President Obama's numbers not being strong enough, especially with Latino voters or young voters. But you saw President Obama and Vice President Biden then close the gap very strongly with young voters and Latino voters in 2012. We're expecting the same thing in 2024. It's extremely early to be looking at, you know, who has a likely voter model over 13 months before Election Day, you know, it just uh, is not possible at this point. So we're very confident with where the numbers are. Yes, the Biden campaign is going to keep working hard every day for younger voters, for voters of color. And by Election Day, we're very confident that with a strong economy, uh, President Biden is going to perform very well. So what you're saying is that back in 2011, Former pre or then President Obama was seeing soft support among Latinos, among black voters, among younger voters. We saw the exact same trends. We saw the exact same trends in 2011. If you go back to this point in time, including into early 2012, we can go back into the spring of 2012 when there were still questions on what was happening. We had a similar situation. Uh, President Obama inherited uh, a weak economy. Uh, and he was doing everything he could to turn the economy around. And an economic recovery is hard, and it does take time. 
But we saw that by 2012, when the Obama campaign was in full force, he really connected well with young voters, with Latino voters, with black voters. And that made the difference in a very close election. So we're expecting similar things here. There's nothing out of the ordinary right now with uh, some of these poll numbers that people are, are uh, supposedly fretting about. It's early. And when the campaign is up and running in full force and Americans see the choice, when they're confronted with the choice, uh, I, we think very strongly that Americans are going to come behind uh, President Obama, that the economic recovery uh, will be in full force. And they're going to vote to reelect President Obama, especially when they President see the Biden, you mean the Republicans. Excuse me, <laughs> President Biden, especially when Americans see the choices on the other side of the aisle that Republicans are, are offering today. Real quick, the president continues to make the point, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. If that alternative is Donald Trump or Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis, is that going to be enough to drag people out to vote? Or are they going to need more than that? Look, elections are always about contrast. You have to decide between one side and the other. And we think that President Biden has shown incredible leadership, steadiness, uh, diplomacy at the helm. And when you look at that contrast between Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis or really any of the extreme candidates the Republicans are offering, Americans are going to be able to make that choice. It's going to be a very easy choice when they see what President Biden has been offering and the leadership style and the compassion that he has governed with is going to be uh, a critical a critical point for Americans. It is always about contrast. It is always about comparing what the other side has to offer. And right now, you know, it took him three weeks to pick a Speaker of the House. The Republicans don't have a lot to offer uh, to the American public. All righty. Matt Barreto, thank you. We'll talk again soon. All right. Thank you, Ed.